welcome. I'm Peggy. Thank you for letting us be a part of your day. And I hope wherever you are, find a chair and sit down and be comfortable. This is something that I certainly don't want to miss, and I hope you will. We're going to have a chance to learn a lot about people and, and about Cuba. We hear about it, but we really don't know about it. And I'm very grateful to have two people here with me, uh, Dr. Robert, and everybody calls him Bob, and Sandy Bob. White. Yep. Yeah. And you are ministers, mm -hmm. yes. but you are, what do you call yourself? Uh, retired, I guess, you know, whatever that means. You're uh, never going to retire. Never retire. You know, <laughs> no. you know, when, when I retire, that'll be heaven. You know, that, that'll be it, yeah. But you have a mission now. Yes. That you go to Cuba. Primarily Cuba, yes, ma'am. And you, do you take people there with you? We take teams with us. We're going in November, November the 1st through the 8th. Okay. We have 13 going this time with us. And we, we, we usually take a team of 15 to 20 at a time. And, and you go as do. Christians. We go as Christians. We actually obtain religious visas. We're there for religious purposes. Uh, they know. I mean, they, they've got my record. They know how many times I come in. They know what I'm doing. They know where I'm at. But we're there doing religious activities. So we're involved in religious, religious stuff. So it's pretty exciting what God's doing down there in spite of what the government does. Because the government, they're not allowed, are they? Not, not much, no. More so now than it used to be. But uh, there for a long time, it was very, very, there was oppression. Uh, a lot of people suffered. And a lot of people went through some hard times years back. Now, it's becoming a little better. But because Christianity is growing. See, we have things here we just take for granted, you know. Yeah. And you tell me it's very different. What do you think, Judge? It's very different. They don't have a lot. Um, their salaries are very, very small, about $15 a month. And they're supposed to live on that. So they do get um, a ration book to get eggs and sugar and coffee uh, and such as that, maybe a sliced meat, but they don't live on very much. And so they really depend on the Lord, and that, that we need, that's why we need to take them to the Lord, too, is that they show that the Lord is going to take care of them, and uh, they do. Well, does. how did you happen to get so deeply involved in this? Well, very quickly. Because uh, you are a minister, and you're, yes, reti you're retired, I'm but retired. you'll never retire. No, no, no I'm not going <laughs> to retire. But what happened was I'd been praying about going to Cuba for a long time, about five years. A friend of mine called me. It was back in 2000. Called me. I was in Knoxville, Tennessee. He called me and said, Rob, I want you to pray about something. I said, okay. He said, I want you to go to Cuba. He said, I'll go. He said, no, I want you to pray about it. I said, Ron, I've been praying for three or four years. I don't need to pray anymore. God just answered the prayer. So I went down and began to teach at the house church, which we're part of in Alamar. And that began the ministry that's now lasted 19 years. And um, have seen out of that one house church about 104 other house churches across the island now. So... God has done a mighty work. We're not the only ones that go with this group. There are other teams now that go, and even from the teams we've bought, uh, brought there, they have expanded, and they're taking people now too. So we've seen it grow from that. But this is more than sightseeing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Very much so. Yes. What What do you do when you get down there, and then you're getting ready to go again, and how do you find people? Does anybody go? Yeah, they can. What do you yes, think? Huh? Yes. Um, we, uh, just word of mouth mainly, of the people that hear of our missions and it's just really spread a lot the, they just come call us and say when are you going to Cuba and we have a lot of repeats and the people that go really love to go we have one couple that's going with us this next time and they've probably been 10 or 12 times just every time we go they want to go because it's just it just you, it's just a great trip to go on because it, people are so very receptive and we're flying now from, I like, from Greenville. We, we hook in Atlanta. Delta goes in. So that's a lot better than it used to be going through Miami with a charter and all of that. Uh -huh. So it's much better. We fly it's by easier. Delta. It's, it's a very easier. easy trip. It really is. It's a very easy trip. Yes. And so you have special places that you're allowed to go or tell us about it. I mean, I it's so foreign to anything that, yeah. that we know about here. We're pretty much free to go anywhere you know, within the, within the country. They don't allow us in certain government places, but we're free to go anywhere, uh, out in the rural area, uh, as well as around Havana. We're free to share the gospel on the streets. We do that. We use an Cube as a witnessing tool and tracks. 
Uh, people are very receptive. Uh, we see numbers of people come to faith in Christ. But they're immediately, the name is taken down. And they're immediately, a house church follows up with them. And so there's discipleship with their own limitations that goes on right away. So we're seeing that as we've been going back now 19 years, we see the fruit that remains. We see, we see young, young adults that have become older adults that have children of their own now. So we're seeing the fruit, which is one of the reasons we do that. But uh, it's, and on the street, we, just, we go out and we just talk to people. We, we do that through an interpreter, too. Oh, yes. We go out and we share track. We take a, a, a number of tracks, several thousand tracks we take down, and we give those out on the streets with our interpreters and guides. And people, they'll take them and they'll start reading them. We don't see any on the ground. They, they sit down and read they'll it or stand them. and read. And they um, will we'll be traveled down the road a little bit, and they'll stop us and say, hey, hey, can I have more? I want some to give to my neighbors. So they're very open to receive the gospel. And when we do have one that receives the gospel, we give them a Bible. And, uh, and like Rob said, that we Spanish follow, follow up. Now, we don't speak Spanish, but we have some great mm -hmm. interpreters. So I just say, grab me an interpreter, and we just go with it. Yeah. But they are so very open. Uh, they'll stop us. It's very easy to grab a crowd. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, and we have to be careful of that because we don't want to get a I was going to say, you crowd. haven't been stopped. or No, we've, we have been stopped two times, but we have the documentation. We have the religious visas, which is with our passport. A religious visa. Yes, ma'am. So we're, we're free to do it. Uh, you know, there's probably some restrictions, but basically we're free to share the gospel. Uh, and quite frankly, I hate to say this, but we're much freer there than we are in our own country, to be honest with you. And back, back up a minute. What did you say? <laughs> so we're freer there than we are in our own country sometimes as far as sharing You're the gospel. the gospel. No, 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 no. Uh, we're able to do this. We're able to go into places. Uh, in fact, very quickly, the, there was a group of men from Louisville, Kentucky that were down at our trip earlier, and they sang with the National Choir in Cuba. Now, the National Choir in Cuba is like the Metropolitan Opera here. I mean, it is, it is the premier mm. group. I mean, it's, it is big. It's huge. So they got to sing with that. Now, that's a little thing to some people. Well, you realize you're standing in a lot of that crowd there probably have never heard about Jesus Christ or have never been exposed to the gospel. But yet these men sing, had a testimony is given, and they're free to do that. So that's come a long way. It wasn't that way a number of years ago, but God has continued to break those barriers down. And, and what, about, the what about the children in schools? Same when she talk about that. That's, yeah, talk about the kids. Well, they, they wear uniforms to school, and their uniforms uh, are, are just how they, like, the lower grades, the middle grades, and the high school. And they come home for lunch. And uh, we've seen them, like downtown Havana, you're just right on a sh small sidewalk on the street, and there may be music blaring out from other, other places down there. And you can see into the classrooms, just right on the street. And all these little kids are sitting there. And they, they just, and they're free to walk around in their, in their area, their towns. Uh, you know, we wouldn't dare let our children just no. walk no. home from school. No way. But they're free to go home. It's just very, very safe there. And you so, see uh, kids. You see, you see kids out. So playing you mean they're them. safer than we are? <laughs> well, <laughs> could be. They definitely are. I wouldn't. I wouldn't let mine like that. No, no. I wouldn't let mine walk home. I mean, from they're school. they're down in the areas playing. They're in town together. Uh, the kids are yeah. out playing ball in the street. The youth far are together. From their homes. You see them moving around. Um, much better. And by the way, the literacy rate is almost 100% uh -huh. literate in Cuba. They have a very, very little illiteracy. Uh, so Their colleges are also free. Mm -hmm. So the education so is no free. Tuition. It's free. But uh, the industry is not very good, but uh, their education is free. Goodness. So we, th we, this seems so foreign to us. Yeah. Um, it's, hard for, it's hard for Americans to think people live like that. 90 miles south of Key West. I was going to say. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they're our away. neighbors. That's yeah. right. 90 yeah. miles away. And it's hard to believe. And here's, a, here's an island that's basically 50 years behind. Some live in very do. sad conditions. Yes. And some have a little more. So it's just whatever you, you get. Mm -hmm. Usually you're back when um, Castro was over everything. He, he gave the people a home. So wherever they were put, they had to stay there for years and years and years. Picture they, on the screen They right weren't now. be able to. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is actually the, uh, the communist-type buildings that was uh, built. I think Russia built a lot of those for the 
for the people, and we have our now they're our like children's. apartments where mm -hmm. people live. Yeah, they're, like they're our houses, but you see mainly these apartments, and they're still building apartments all over the place and transplanting people that live in smaller places, places that aren't so good. They'll put them in an apartment. Mm -hmm. And you don't have yeah. elevators in most of those places either. So no. if you're, and, and we have seen invalid people that live on the fifth floor mm -hmm. that have been taken up there, they can't just come and go. So it's, it's you know, you're not free to walk out and sit in your front yard uh, like yeah. we do here, but they're very free and they're very mobile to move around. You see again another this one here. This is a building, on the first floor, we had a children's club. And uh, the a kids, there's a, a house, house church, church right, there right there, and now. it's been there for years. And we sometimes see the people. We don't go to the same places all the time, no. but sometimes we sit, we'll see these people again. But we were meeting up on the fifth floor. So this is like the average pretty much person to live. Yes, that's it. Pretty, pretty much, much what they live in. But if you get out in the country, you're going to see um, a little different situations, and even some have dirt floors. And by the way, have you ever seen anybody sweep a dirt floor? <laughs> they, without a doubt. When you go into a home, and we've been into them with dirt floors, they're swept clean. They are. They're swept. She sweeps them. Dirt floor. Very Just clean. Mm -hmm. Very clean house, but they don't have anything. Dr. Bob, how did you and Sandy get involved so deeply into this? I mean, I know that you are a Christian minister. Yes, ma'am. Well, and you, you'll never retire. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll go to heaven. As long as there's breath in my body, I, I want to do what I'm doing. But we fell in love with the people uh, very quickly. Number two, they're so hungry. I mean, it, they're so hungry. Uh, I mean, you go there, and, I mean, they want to talk. They want, they want time with you. You don't mean hungry for food. You mean hungry, hungry for, for companionship yeah. and, and hungry for the sharing of yeah. God's Word. And they love yeah. to hear about America. And they're always <laughs> amazed now that Americans, because for a while, you didn't see Americans. Yeah. They always thought we were Canadian. Mm -hmm. I said, no, we're from America, the United States. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's an obvious talking point. But God has used that. But we love the people and just love the country, love the culture. Eduardo and his family. So we just, for us, it was the place God said, this is where I want you to finish your life. I want you to plant it here mm -hmm. and as often as you can get here. And other teams are going. Mm -hmm. Many of the folks that have gone with us now lead teams themselves. I was going to say, the, that brings something else. You take people down yes, there. Yes, we take, we take is people. it like a, a holiday thing, no. or you take them to work, <laughs> no, or what? Go you, you, you go to work. <laughs> you yes. take them as missionaries. They right. go as missionaries. Yeah, yeah. They're on, we're on, we're, we usually, very quickly what we do, we'll get in usually on a Thursday. We fly down, and it's kind of an unpacked day. And usually on Thursday night, we'll do a kids club and an evangelistic service. Then Friday, we're on the streets sharing the gospel, back, in, back at night in a children's club or, or a Bible study. Saturday is a children's club ministry. Mm -hmm. Sunday, we preach in the house churches. Monday, Tuesday, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, on the street, house church, clubs, you know, that night. Then Wednesday, we usually have an off day, which we take a day and let the people never be in. We see the sights, the culture. Eduardo is very big. He said, I want you to experience Cuba. I want you to experience my culture. I want you to know. I want you to smell it. So we smell the smells, diesel, fuel, no, 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 no regulatory uh, pollution is real. Mm -hmm. And you have never, you've been welcomed. I mean, oh yes. One story about is about a lady that uh, we visited with our interpreters and our guide. She lived on about the third floor of one of these apartment buildings, and yes. I said, "Have you, whoever thought that you would have had Americans in your home?" First, we kind of chat and get to know the people, and she said, "Oh, I knew you were coming." I said, "Well, how'd you know?" And she said, "I had a dream that you were going to be here." Oh. And several people have told us that they had had visions and dreams that someone would come to their door, just like because it certainly wasn't publicized no, by the media. Don't, I, down no, there. no, no. They, don't, they don't advertise where they. No, are. two no. people I know had told me they had visions that yeah. someone would come. So I think that vision and dreams must be something to it. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back. and And we have a phone number, and I'll, I want to be sure everybody gets it. We'll be right back. <laughs> 